So I'm just going to go ahead and start where we ended last time. So with center manifold theory, and first we'll do it for continuous systems, and then we'll go to maps. Um, so today it's continuous systems, ODEs. Okay, I can see that, good. And uh, most of this comes from, this is chapter 18 of the Wiggins book. And um, also I use a little bit from a section from Verholst. Verholst is much uh, more concise. So it's section 13.4 of Verholst. So let me give a, a motivation from just linear vector fields. So if we had a system, I'll say z dot equals d z. Uh, z is, it's a vector in Rn and d is an n by n constant matrix. Uh, we can ask the question, is Z equals zero stable? Right, that's a common question that comes up. And so we would look at the eigenvalues of D to see if it's stable. See if the origin is stable. And for it to be stable, we need there to be no eigenvalues with positive real part. So none of the eigenvalues uh, on the, the right half plane. All right. So look at the spectrum of D. And so we can have things on the imaginary axis, but um, this is for, for a, a linear vector field, linear ODE. So if there are no eigenvalues with positive real part, then we can find a linear transformation that puts the system into the following form. Um, so for this case, and it is a block diagonal form. So it is X dot, Y dot equals um, so this A is a matrix, B is a matrix, and X and Y are vectors. So A is a uh, C by C, where C is a integer matrix with eigenvalues of zero real part. B is a S by S, right? Because we would have uh, U equals zero. Um, oops. Eigenvalues of negative real part. And hopefully it's clear that means X is a C dimensional y is s dimensional uh, c plus s equals n
So we could do a, a transformation. Um, you don't have to go to a complete Jordan canonical form, uh, but you can just you can block diagonalize this way. Um, and just by the way, we can note that you cannot put a Hamiltonian system in this form unless b equals zero. That might be worth saying. So you cannot put a canonical Hamiltonian system That's a so yeah, go ahead. That's a consequence of the fact that you would have to have an unstable direction, right? Yeah. So what's the solution of an ODE that's put in this kind of nice block diagonal form? Um, well, we've got two separate ODEs. So the solution X is a function of time, Y is a function of time, is E to the A T, X naught, E to the B T, why not? And what's the long time solution? Well. If we look at the uh, it, the t going to infinity case, this part goes to zero as t goes to positive infinity because b uh, has all of the stable directions. So that part will just sort of shrink to nothing. So that means we only need to look at e to the a t for stability. Now, remember, I, from the beginning, I'm assuming we've got a linear system. So um, that means to determine stability of the origin, we need only look uh, at e to the a t for stability. So are there imaginary eigenvalues? Are there repeated eigenvalues? Uh, is it zero eigenvalues? That's the linear case. Now, can something similar be done in the nonlinear case? So for the nonlinear case, we're not going to have z dot equals a matrix times z. We'll generally have z dot is some function, which I'll write as capital F times z. Z is, again, an Rn. And so let's suppose um, we, we know an equilibrium point. I'll call that z naught. So that means that the right hand side, the vector field vanishes at z naught. So f of z naught is a vector of zeros. So is z naught a stable point? Stable equilibrium point. Well, our first inclination and the first step that we would do, we need to do is to look at the linearization. Uh, we first need to make a change of variables to do that. So to look at the linearization, we first make a change of variables. So that in the new variables, the um, z naught is the origin. So the we'll, we'll uh, write a new variable w, which is z minus z naught. 
So we're translating the equilibrium point to the origin in these coordinates. Uh, this also means uh, just rewriting z equals w plus z naught. Um, and so doing stuff very similar to what we've done before, just with different symbols. What do we get? Uh, z dot um, equals w dot equals f of w plus z naught. Now we tailor expand uh, f. So we'll get d f evaluated at the equilibrium point times w plus terms that are of order uh, w squared. So we might, I'll also write things that look like this as like order two. So we'll get w dot is d f, so the Jacobian of f evaluated at z naught times w. This is a constant matrix. Uh, plus the terms that are second order and, and higher. So this is our the main thing. So now uh, we can compute the eigenvalues of this Jacobian. And um, we've basically reduced the problem to this linear problem, or so we think. Um, so let's let's go to the case where let's suppose we have an eigenvalue, or we have no eigenvalues. This is uh, for d f z naught of positive real part. Then, um, based on what we've talked about before, and let's look in the W space, the W space, and I'm just sketching things. We'll have a, a center subspace and a stable subspace. And we could put arrows on the stable subspace. We don't yet know which way arrows go on the center subspace. Um, so here's our origin in W space. We know that there is a stable manifold of the origin, which is uh, the nonlinear version. It's tangent to the uh, stable subspace at the origin. There's also a center manifold. of the origin that is tangent to the center subspace at the origin. And so the stable directions, we know those were all, all kind of just go uh, shrink down so that we'll be kind of left with the center manifold. So the stability of the origin is determined by the center manifold. and the dynamics along the center manifold. So that means we do need to consider the vector field along the center manifold. So in the following um, we will compute the center manifold or begin to uh, compute it techniques to compute it, and the vector field along it. And it's, it's possible that even though um, we've got a situation like this, the, the origin could end up being stable or unstable. It's not yet determined. That's why we have to compute the center manifold. And to do that, we have to consider um, things beyond the linear approximation. We have to go to nonlinear terms. So, so we're, we're going to use the same 
uh, a similar setup to what I have above, but this is, I guess, sort of the meat of what we're gonna do. So here is the center manifold theory. That's the, with regard to the computation. So um, near, near the equilibrium point that we care about, we put our ODE, which is you know, the vector field, into the, we're gonna do uh, better than we did before. Uh, we're gonna go into the eigenbasis. Um, so just like before, we'll break it up into the X directions, which are the center directions and the Y directions, which are the stable directions. So X dot equals a X, but we are going to include a non, the nonlinear part. So this is F considers, uh, terms that are, um, order two and higher. Y dot is B Y plus G X Y. So we're putting everything into that form. Um, X and Y, I'll just write it this way. They are Y is C dimensional. Sorry, X is C dimensional. Y is S dimensional. Um, these are the nonlinear parts. So we're keeping them around. We need to use them. Um, a A uh, is like before C by C constant matrix. Professor. Yeah. A and B are themselves also diagonal, right? Uh, not necessarily. But if you put it into the eigen basis, then shouldn't we only have a shouldn't we have a decoupled system? They are decoupled, um, but we're not they aren't necessarily diagonalized. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll Kind of have to go to a high dimension to see that, but we will we will see an example of that. Um, because the so the the equilibrium point here is the origin. So we're going to require that requires that f at uh, the origin is zero and g at the origin is zero. We also have that the um, F is just second order terms and higher. So that means if you take the Jacobian of F at the origin, it's zero because we've already got the linear parts here in AX and in BY. So the Jacobian of each of these is zero. All right. So no, we, we, we probably, in any general problem, you'll have to transform from the original coordinates to these x, y coordinates. Um, so it, yeah, it might be confusing for me to say eigenbasis here. I'll just say into the following and then make a note. Uh, we likely had to transform from the original coordinates to these x, y coordinates, which um, our goal is just to uncouple the stable directions from the un unstable directions. And we don't, we don't need to go further just yet. Um, so A is a C by C constant matrix. And just like before, it's with eigenvalues of zero real part. B is a S by S constant matrix with eigenvalues of negative real part. 
and the um, the stability of the C dimensional center manifold of the origin will give us the stability of the origin. So we we're going to approximate the center manifold uh, locally with a function y equals h of x. And even though I'll be I'm sketching over here an s equals one, c equals one version. Um, this can be extended to s equals anything and c equals anything. So we've got our x directions, we've got our y directions, and um, here is the the curve. This is the center manifold of the origin, and we are locally representing it by a graph of the um, stable directions as a function of the center directions. So this is going to be a C dimensional surface. And we will use, we'll use Taylor series expansion to get this, to get these terms. <laughs> and then um, once we've approximated that surface, uh, then we can get the vector field along that surface. And so it's this is once we have y equals h of x approximated to uh, the order we want. And maybe we don't know ahead of time what that is. Um, like you might have to go to, there's a, you'll have to go to a high enough order to actually determine stability if, if that's the only question you have. And then you can go to even higher orders if you're just trying to accurately represent the center of manifold. Remember from before we said that sometimes um, some systems, the center manifold can acts as a, um, a reduced or order model. So sometimes, the long-term dynamics only depend on the vector field along the center manifold. Um, so once we have y equals h of x uh, approximated to the order we want, um, uh, let me call this up here equation star. Then the dynamics of our original vector field restricted to the center manifold. And that's where all the long time dynamics will go. Is uh, for a U coordinate. Uh, are you sufficiently small? It's given by the following C dimensional vector field. And that is u dot equals a u plus f u h u, where u is uh, c dimensional. 
you might wonder why are we not using x? It's because we're treating u as a, it's like a curvilinear coordinate along our surface. So basically it looks like uh, we just took the x direction here and we plugged in for y uh, h of x. So we have this surface, y equals h of x. There's a vector field restricted to the surface. <clears throat> um, professor? Yeah. So um, the function over here, f, is the same f as we used above, right, which was for x dot? That's correct. Yeah. So wouldn't it be better to have a function that actually does represent the dynamics along that curved direction rather than along the horizontal direction? If we're using a curvilinear coordinate, I mean. I mean, you, you want a different equation or what are you asking? No, I mean, um, there might be a way to like rotate the x dot y dot vector field so that instead of f, we have some other function that truly represents the dynamics along the curve. I don't know if it's what, possible to do that. Um, well, you don't have to do that. Okay. You, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is, if you, if you look at Wiggins, this is the, the first theorem of three. Uh, there's, this is the existence theorem. There's a stability theorem that um, you could look at in Wiggins, but I don't think it, uh, needs to be mentioned here and uh, kind of an approximation theorem. But we're going to focus on kind of the computational aspects. So um, how do we get this? How do we compute this for a given system? So, so eventually we'll get that. So it's kind of like, we want these two things. We want to get that, we want to get that. And we'll use Taylor series approximation to do it. All right. So, we'll use the tangency condition. Basically, we just take this way of writing the C dimensional surface and we take its time derivative. So Y dot equals Jacobian of H times X dot. And then we'll just rewrite this D H X x dot minus y dot equals zero. And then we will uh, substitute this into those original ODEs. So let me just sneak up here. This is the form in which we've written our ODEs. So just plug in this, the tangency condition into that. And what do we get? Um, we'll get dhx times ax plus fx hx. minus b h x so we're just we're just rewriting that we're rewriting this expression rewriting the tangency condition but now substituting in the x dot and y dot expressions from above right so this is x dot and then uh then it's minus y dot and y dot it was b times y b is uh, y is now h of x minus g x h of x 
So we've just rewritten the tangency condition. But this is our main uh, workhorse for computing things. <clears throat> if you want kind of a, a sketch of what's going on here, if we have some kind of curved surface, here's our origin, the equilibrium point. We've got our um, stable directions. And then this is our center manifold. And um, this surface is y equals h of x. Uh, and we've got you know, x1, x2 are coordinates. <clears throat> so y equals h of x1 and x2, if you write it in terms of scalars. <clears throat> so we will We'll uh, assume a Taylor series approximation. Or H of X. And uh, this, I guess, I guess I'll call it pound. This equation. that'll give us the terms. And then we'll be able to get this vector field u dot once we've got h. Okay. So let's let's try an example um, and then hopefully this can become more crystallized in your mind. So we'll do an example just a 2D system to get us started. 2D is the simplest, otherwise if we have one dimensional, not, not too interesting. It is interesting for maps, but not for ODs. Anyway, okay, so here's our example 2D system. X dot is uh, X squared Y minus X to the fifth. Y dot equals negative Y plus x squared. Um, just staring at that, at least to me, the stability of the origin is not obvious. Uh, so this example, by the way, if you wanted to look at it, it's page uh, 249 of Wiggins. Not obvious. I mean, maybe it's obvious to you. Maybe we could take bets. Uh, who thinks the origin is stable? Anyway, maybe I'll look at the participants' screen if you want to vote. You say yes, it's stable. No, it's unstable. Uh, yeah. Anybody? Anyone? Unstable. We got one vote for unstable. One vote for it's stable. Okay. The rest of you are uh, thoughtfully agnostic on this subject. Okay. I don't know. Let's find out. All right. So this is, fortunately, this is already in the standard form. Right. This is already in the uh, and by standard form. that um, what we were looking at above here, A equals zero, which is a one by one matrix of eigenvalues of zero real part. Uh, it's just the scalar. And B is negative one. So, okay. Um, so we, we really do have a situation where there's X and Y and uh, this is E uh, 
C, Y direction is E, S, and we want to know what the uh, what the center manifold is. So Y equals H of X. So to conclude stability of the origin, we need to uh, first basically find the center manifold because I've been using both coordinates there. So we wanna find, let me do it in orange, that's kind of fun. Find the center manifold, then uh, to get the dynamics along it. And if you want, um, so the U coordinate be, being some kind of curvilinear coordinate, here's the origin in that center manifold. And uh, Here's like the U and we want to know what's the vector field. Is the vector field, you know, pointing towards? Um, is it pointing away? We don't know. We don't know what's the vector field. We'll get it. We'll find out. Okay, so we've already established this is in the appropriate form. A equals zero, B equals one. Uh, so A equals zero and then we have F of X and Y, the uh, part that's second order and higher. This is x squared y minus x to the fifth. B is negative one and g is just x squared. All right. Y equals h of x. Okay. Um, we're gonna do a Taylor series expansion. And just like before, there's no linear term. There's no linear term. Uh, this thing goes y equals h of x goes to a slope of zero at the origin. So there is no linear term. So the first term we have to calculate is a quadratic term. And then uh, if necessary, a cubic term. And oh my goodness, quartic term, if, uh, if it comes to that. And you know, just an order five and higher, if we have to, we don't know, we don't know. All right, so let's use the tangency condition that is dh x x dot minus y dot equals zero um, and we're basically just rewriting the tangency condition substituting in uh, everything we know okay so what is dh of x dh of x is 2 a x plus 3bx squared plus 4cx cubed plus something of order 4. Let me just put that in square brackets here. Okay, so that was the dh of x times x dot. Um, what is x dot? x squared times y, but instead of y, we put h of x minus x to the fifth. Now, um, yeah, I'm not done yet. Mm, minus, oh no, we have to do something else. Plus, yeah. Uh, plus y. So a x squared plus b x cubed plus c x to the fourth plus things of order five minus x squared equals zero. So this is the same as the tangency condition, right? This thing is, if you want, this is x dot. And then what I've written here is minus y dot. Okay, as far as we're good. Um, why didn't I write out h of x here? Well, I'll tell you why. I look at this and I go, well, x squared times h of x, this is something that's of least order four. And you know, this thing is order five. It's a lot of orders. This is, 
because we have two ax, this is order one. So I've got something order one that's times something of order four. This is all of order five. And maybe I don't need to compute order five things. So what am I left with? I'm left with this stuff over here. What does this stuff over here tell us? If we just group um, orders in the x squared order, we have a minus one equals zero. So that tells us a equals one. What about cubic order? We have b, and then there's nothing else, b equals zero. Okay, b equals zero and so on. C is going to equal something, but we might not need it. So we know now that at least to leading order, this uh, the curve that approximates the center manifold is x squared. There's no cubic term. There might be terms of order four. Um, uh, we'll just, you know, I'm just going to leave it for now. Why are we leaving it for now? I mean, you could go back to it if you want, but we have a modest goal, which is we just want to know, is the origin stable? Is the origin stable? If it's like, I want to compute the center manifold to as high an order as, as possible, then okay, you're welcome to that. But we just want to right now find out, is the origin stable? All right, so what does this tell us? We've got... Um, I guess now we have a better idea. Here's E S. Oh, I keep getting it wrong. E C is the X directions. E S is the Y directions. And this manifold is actually a parabola to leading order. That is our center manifold. Okay. Now that we have that, we can uh, compute the vector field along the center manifold. So from x dot equals x squared y minus x to the fifth, we can compute the vector field along the center manifold. So u dot equals u squared h of u minus u to the fifth. Uh, what is h of u? h of u would be u squared plus terms of order four. So this is going to be u to the fourth plus higher order terms terms of order five and higher. So it's a leading order, u dot is u to the fourth. So the vector field along the center manifold is given to leading order uh, with that. Definitely not linear, it's, it's non-linear, it's a, it's a fourth order term. Um, so what, I mean, if you, if you look in the u space, right here's u, uh, what does this give you? To the right, things are moving. The vector field is increasing to the right. Um, and also to the left of the origin, this is u equals zero. So all we care about now, what's the stability of u equals zero? So this is the dynamics reduced or restricted to the center manifold. Um, again, things are moving to the right. So is the origin stable or unstable? No thoughts? But if I start to the left, then I move to the origin. But if I start just a little bit to the right of the origin here, I move away. So 
u equals zero is unstable. And the dynamics of the, so the stability of the equilibrium point in the full system is determined by the stability of the equilibrium point reduced to the center manifold. So the origin is unstable. And you could plug this into uh, your favorite, you could plug this ODE up here into your favorite phase portrait plotter and you would probably, well, let's hope, see the same thing. But we, I think we have enough that we could even sketch what's going on. So we've got uh, our center manifold here. Um, we don't know exactly what the stable manifold's doing, but we don't really care. It's Things are stable along it. And then along the center manifold, things are moving, they're moving slowly, right? The stable directions are, uh, dynamics along the stable directions is decreasing exponentially. U to the fourth is not an exponential, but it, it's, it's like a slow ooze. So there's slow oozing. We might even put double arrows on the stable direction just to emphasize how much faster they are at reducing down to the center manifold. And any nearby trajectory, um, you would see it, let's say I'd start with this initial condition. It's gonna quickly, so double arrow, go to the center manifold and then slowly ooze along it. Starting from above, the same thing, quickly kind of converge to this thing and then slowly ooze along it. And this is why center manifolds are often called slow manifolds, as I mentioned last time. What happens if I start over here in this quadrant? Well, quickly go to the center manifold and then I go to the origin, slowly. Um, but the stability of the equilibrium point is determined by what happens in a neighborhood. We just find uh, stability or it's a, a, a equilibrium point is unstable if there's any point in an open neighborhood that leaves and there is things to the right of the stable manifold leave. So what is this type of equilibrium point called? Is it a saddle node? Uh, I don't know what it would be called. Okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's weird. Some people, I think um, Strogat's book calls it like a half stable equilibrium and he sometimes uses like um, a half open circle, like a point that's filled in, circle filled in is like stable and everything's going towards it. Um, half open means like some stuff's coming in and some stuff's coming out and then totally open means, you know, things are all leaving. So half stable, but half stable means unstable in terms of this classification. Um, it is, in terms of Lyapunov stability, it is unstable. <clears throat> um, because things all just colored in in yellow, things on this right side leave. Initial conditions in this region. Uh, leave the leave the neighborhood of the equilibrium point. Now we don't know what the full global dynamics are. It's possible that there's some circuitous route by which things are like coming back. We're just talking about local stability, right? When you talk about global things, it gets more in interesting. You could have a point that is locally unstable and yet globally stable. I think that's true. Um, but yeah, they, they kind of defy classification. Some of you might have heard of, I don't know if this is when I rag on Lyapunov functions. I usually try to maybe rag on them. Um, uh, Lyapunov functions are another way to determine the stability of a point, but they're challenging to come up with. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, 
don't worry if you do and you're like a champion of Lyapunov functions just know they they don't they don't always work this is a systematic way to determine stability uh, Lyapunov function approach uh, takes a lot of guesswork I'd rather do something that I could do a straightforward computation and this is by and large straightforward um, this is a nice example in that it, it illustrates another aspect of uh, center manifold theory. Because you might say, why did we go through all this nonlinear computation? Um, so this question might have occurred to you. Could we just do a tangent space approximation? To the center manifold. To determine stability. Like, why did I go to all that effort? I mean, I, I won't even poll because hopefully you know the answer is no. So what does this mean? What does it mean to do a tangent space approximation? Um, let me let me draw my directions. Here is E S. Here is E C. These are the x directions. These are the y directions. So, if uh, instead of y equals h of x, suppose I just used y equals zero and said that's a good enough approximation for me to determine the vector field along the center manifold. Um, so if we do that, let's choose that. So with y equals zero, we now plug into uh, x dot equals x squared y minus x to the fifth. And hopefully you'll see what happens. We would get x dot equals negative x to the fifth. And so we would say the dynamics along our center manifold is that, which is what? That would mean um, if I'm to the right, I've got things kind of going in towards the origin. And to the left, I also have things going in towards the origin. But that's incorrect. So I would conclude from that stability And if my job depended on it, like, hey, your boss says, is the origin stable or unstable? You'd, you'd get it wrong. So no, you can't just approximate the center manifold, the curved thing, by the center subspace. Because they have uh, vector fields that could be pointing in different directions, right? Um, if you're wondering uh, how am I determining stability from things, maybe I should plot because I, I don't think I've done that. Um, you can plot u dot versus u. And so u dot versus u. This is uh, u to the fourth. Um, and then it's like down below on the U axis, we could plot what the size of the arrows are and their direction. If U, is, U dot is positive, things are going to the right. So we would get that. Um, if we you know, considered this the coordinate, U dot equals negative U to the fifth, uh, the vector field is distinctly different. Um, we get, uh, what, something like this. So we would conclude that this is going to the left and this part is going to the right. And so we'd say stability and it's not, it's really not. So we had to look at the vector field restricted to the center manifold, not the center subspace. So let's just give this a resounding no and move on. 
that no, you can't do that. I mean, maybe sometimes you'll happen to get it right, but. Um, I don't, I don't want you to do that kind of guesswork. All right. Are there other questions so far? We're going to do another example of a 3D example. Are there any situations under which uh, center, applying center manifold theory would be inconclusive because say like higher order effects somehow had, it kind of like, if you kept considering conclusively higher, higher order effects, it kept changing the result. Is that ever possible? No, because the leading, remember, we're looking in the neighborhood of the origin. Right. So the leading order term is what dominates. Right. Okay. That's why we were able to stop here at uh, u to the fourth. We didn't care about what u to the fifth was. Doesn't right. matter because we're looking at only a neighborhood of the origin. Right. Okay. And that brings up some interesting things. You could have the possibility that um, the u dot vector field actually has a zero, a non-trivial zero. Like what if we get that the u dot vector field, you go to high enough terms and whoa, it goes back to zero. Well, that actually implies there's another e equilibrium point and it's in the center manifold of your original point. Um, so if you have, if the u dot versus u curve as a zero that implies uh, another equilibrium point and this is why and we'll get to this later um, there's a connection a strong connection between center manifolds and local bifurcation theory if there is a local bifur bifurcation like a new equilibrium point shows up as parameters are varied you will see it in the vector field restricted to the center manifold of your original point of interest. So we do want to consider higher order terms of that uh, center manifold vector field, but it doesn't change the conclusion about stability near the origin. All right. Uh, professor? Yes. Uh, uh, what we can learn from the, uh, uh, if we release trajectory over the phase space, then uh, can the statistics will tell uh, whether the uh, uh, trajectories are behaving smoothly or uh, slowly in the sense of exit time distribution? If, so if we, if we release trajectories over the hyperbolic point, the trajectory will escape fast. But in this case, the trajectory will slow down, isn't it? And uh, so it sounds like uh, you're mentioning, are there kind of like numerical methods one could use to conclude a center manifold without doing the Taylor series approximation. And would you see it in things like exit time decompositions? I don't know much about it, but I would, I would suspect that yes. Uh, in fact, there's, a, there's a, a pretty big literature on methods to determine slow manifolds. And I think things like an exit time decomposition are, are used. So yeah, this isn't the, this isn't the only way, um, but it is, it's a straightforward way, especially if you know your vector field um, analytically. So it's, in some sense, it's the, uh, you know, the backbone theory uh, that tells you that the thing must exist. And then there are other numerical methods that can be used to approximate it. Okay. So yeah, in the last uh, 15 minutes, uh, I will start to look at a 3D example. Because it's, uh, it's, it's fun. I, I, uh, I don't know where this is. It's probably in, in Wiggins. Um, X dot, Y dot, Z dot. And yeah, you probably noticed I switch in a cavalier manner between curly brackets for uh, matrices and square brackets. Just depends on how you feel. All right, so here is a vector field. This is the linear part. It's a lot of negative ones. 
And then even so, if some more minus signs, wow. Minus X, Y, okay. So here, X, Y, and Z are um, scalars. And right, you plug in X, Y, and Z equals zero. So the origin uh, is an equilibrium point. So from this, just showing this, you might say, wow, there's a lot of negative ones. Um, is the origin stable? There's so many negative ones. It's got to be, right? Um, it looks like it ought to be stable, but I don't know. So let's call this, uh, I'm going to call this, I don't know if I should call it D, so as not to confuse people or what. Um, yeah, I'll call it D. So that's our matrix D. This is just in the original coordinates. Um, we've got a, uh, so N equals three. This is a three by three constant matrix. So for us to conclude stability about the origin, we need to turn this into the, um, we need to put this in that standard form, start equation, where we've got under the block diagonal form, the X directions uh, being the center directions and the Y directions being the stable directions. Okay, so we will compute the eigenvalues of D first. And we get uh, a double eigenvalue of zero and then a negative three. So that means we have C equals two, S equals one. So we have a 2D center manifold and a 1D um, unstable manifold. Sorry, stable manifold. So we can now put our ODE into the proper form. And instead of using X and Y, I'm going to use UV and W. So we're going to do a, we want to transform. from the original X, Y, and Z coordinates to U, V, and uh, W coordinates, where the first two, these are the, these are the center directions, and then this is the stable direction. So we can do that um, by going into the eigenbasis. So that is one way to, uh, to do this. We, we get that for um, corresponding to the double eigenvalue zero, we get two generalized eigenvectors, one negative one, zero, and zero, one, negative one. So that's the span of our uh, center subspace. Our stable subspace is spanned by the one eigenvector, corresponding to the eigenvalue negative three, and that is one, one, one. So we can um, do a transformation. The linear transformation matrix, uh, we've written it before as P, and remember we use, uh, we put the eigenvectors as columns. So because we want the first part to be the center, was negative one, one, zero. 0, 1, negative 1, and then 1, 1, 1. The third slot goes to the stable. So uh, x, y, and z equals p of u, v, w. Uh, another way to write this transformation is u, v, and w equals p inverse x, y, z. 
Now in the U, V, and W, the U, V, and W ODEs, we're talking about the full nonlinear ODEs. So notice we've got we've got a linear part up here, and then the nonlinear part. Both of them have to be transformed into the new coordinates u, v, and w, so that we have a nice center part, and then the stable part. So this is going to be um, p inverse d p times u, v, and w uh, plus P inverse, and now it gets kind of tricky. We're doing P inverse of what matrix? Of this matrix that's made of negative YZ, negative XZ, negative XY, but all of those in the new coordinates. So we'll, we'll over here remind ourselves we need to write negative Y times Z, but rem remembering that Y must be written in terms of U, V, and W. And Z written in terms of U, V, and W. And how do we write Y in terms of U, V, and W? Well, we'll use this transformation here. And that would give us um, X, you know, for example, what is X? X equals um, U plus W, et cetera. Okay, so then uh, P inverse, the next one is X, written in terms of U, V, and W, times C, written in terms of U, V, and W. And then this is negative X, U, V, and W, times Y, written in terms of U, V, and W. So this is important that you get that part correct. Uh, we already know what to expect from P inverse DP. This is putting our system into the eigenbasis, so this will be in uh, Jordan canonical form, where lambda, capital lambda matrix, is going to be, uh, it'll have the eigenvalues along the diagonal. So the only thing that's non-zero is the negative three. All right, so U, V, and W equals, um, zero, 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 negative three. U, V, and W. So the linear part is particularly nice. The nonlinear part, um, not so nice. So I'm going to write P uh, inverse. So here, P inverse is uh let me just put an overall well i'll just do it this way this is two thirds minus one third minus one third minus one third minus one third minus two thirds one third one third one third that's p inverse and then this these terms written in terms of u v and w give us things that are not as simple. Uh, so negative y times z becomes now v squared minus w squared minus uv plus uw. So it becomes more complicated. And the same is true for all of these. Because our transformation was meant to simplify just the, the linear part, not the nonlinear part. The subject of simplifying the nonlinear part is actually the subject of normal forms, which we will get to, but at a later time. Okay, so just I want you to notice that this is now, notice this is in the form of our original equation star. So if you think of it as x dot equals ax plus f of x, y. Here, x has uh, two components, and it's u and v. y dot is b, y plus g, x, y. f is purely um, quadratic, and you would get it by doing, figuring out what this matrix multiplication is. Um, and the the first two components of the vector are f. So f is gonna have 
um, there's going to be two components to it. Whereas here, y is just w and g of x and y, uh, there's only one component. So we have it, we have everything in the, in the correct form. So we can approximate our center manifold of the origin um, as just like before uh, we wrote it as y equals h of x. Now since w is in the stable direction, w equals h of u and v. So think of um, there's the W direction, that's ES. And we've got our, here's EC, which is uh, U and V. And then there's some curved surface. We don't know exactly what it is, but it is the center manifold of the origin. Okay, and is this is this is locally given by W equals H of U and V. So that describes our 2D surface of the center manifold locally. If you, um, I'll leave it as an exercise. To determine that W um, well, we would first, we first write uh, the quadratic terms. So the quadratic terms, we're writing the homogeneous polynomial um, in or of order two in U and V, which is A squared plus B V squared plus C U V. Um, and then we would include third order terms if we have to, but to leading order, that's what that surface will look like. It's dominated by the second order terms. Okay. Um, how do we determine what A, B, and C are? Well, we'll use the tangency condition. So the tangency condition is, um, for this case, minus w dot plus partial h partial u u dot plus partial h partial v v dot equals zero and this gives us that w is the leading order one ninth u squared plus v squared minus uv so we determined what the coefficients a, b, and c are. And then uh, just to remind ourselves, there could be third ordered terms. We uh, plug this into the uh, vector field equation along the center manifold. Right, which up above is written as u dot equals a u plus f of u comma h u. And to just to remind ourselves what this is, this is w equals h u v. So you could determine what the vector field is and you would get, you'll get u dot equals something v dot equals something. And this something is going to be, it's going to be a nonlinear, there won't even be any linear terms. It's nonlinear 2D vector field from which the stability of the origin can be determined. So you've reduced the problem to um, a 2D, the analysis of a 2D vector field, which um, if I recall, 
you can work out those terms. So that's also left as an exercise, but you get something that looks kind of weird. It looks like a, a little bit like a saddle, but it has more than one unstable direction. Uh, the key point is it's unstable. So you get something that uh, some points near the origin leave. I don't know exactly what it looks like, but um, the uh, these are these are trajectories. A sketch of trajectories along what the, the center manifold of the origin. So figuring out the, what that is is, I'll leave that as an exercise. Um, next time. We'll talk about uh, center manifolds, which depend on parameters, and we'll see the connection between center manifolds and bifurcation theory. Okay.